My name is Elliot Ashby and I'm originally from Glendale, Arizona. I'm a visual producer and photographer. But I think a big part of it is just like saying who you are. Like, I think a lot of people are not self-reflective enough to call themselves on their own bullshit and realize where their weak areas are. And if you're able to spell that out in front of your friends or in front of your loved ones, in front of the person you're in a relationship with, it puts you at a major advantage because at least you've laid it out on the table. Now we can actually deal with it because now we see what it all is. So it's a lot easier for us to talk about it now because nobody's hiding it. Everybody's like, hey, these are your triggers, these are my triggers, these are my insecurities, these are my fears. These are things I think about myself that I hope are not true. You know, will I be alone all of my life? Am I gonna be a workaholic? Uh, will I ever have children? Just, you know, all these different things that I think people grapple with and, and deal with a lot of times they just haven't really put it out there on the table. And I think as you put it out there on the table, you and the people around you can come up with tools, steps to help you overcome that. Depression is a spiral. Depression is, this is what depression is. Depression is like, okay, I feel bad about something I did, so I kick myself for it, and I either overeat, for me it's not eating, so I don't eat, so now my body is even more in a spastic sort of state where it's not able to like cope and come up with solutions. So then I don't feel like going outside, so now I'm not exercising, now I'm not getting out, I'm not getting no sunlight, not getting no vitamin D. And so it becomes this big sort of situation to where it just compounds one thing on top of the other because of this negative. So what I tell people all the time is like, I don't, it's not that I don't stress, I stress, but I don't, I do it too well. I do it better than you. So I'm not gonna do it because I, I would win. But winning in the game of stress is losing, so I don't, I don't allow myself to go there because it isn't somewhere I can go and return as easily as some people. So I don't even let people bring stress to me. People will bring stress to me, I'm like, nope, we're not doing it. They'll try to have me stressed about it, and I'm like, no, nah, I know what it is. I know what time it is, I know what date it is, I know all that. But we still, we, we still gotta do what we gotta do, right? So essentially, worry is negative meditation. It's thinking about something again and again until it produces a physical response in your body. And so I don't want to get into a habit of meditating on the wrong things. So there's news every single day about unarmed black men being shot and killed in the streets, about uh, just systemic racism. It could be microaggressions to someone actually being killed, right? And so I have to be able to, to filter in that information and not internalize it in a way that makes me angry and upset every day. And that's why I feel like Black boy joy is actually, you know, sort of revolutionary. Mm -hmm. It's the idea of being happy, being artistic, doing your art. That isn't something people could do 200, 300, 400 years ago. So I'm living, I'm living joyfully because they could not. I'm doing my art because they could not. A lot of times masculinity puts men in a box where they can't be joyful, where they can't be expressive because we've been taught, especially as black men, to perform manhood in a particular way. People say, oh, well, you're effeminate because you're not, because I'm smiling or because I'm wearing a colorful shirt. And that's damaging because it doesn't allow us to be as joyful, as creative. And that's why I'm so thankful for anyone who pushes the boxes, pushes those boxes aside and says, hey, I'm going to do me, whether it's a Kid Cudi or Kanye or a, uh, anybody, you know, right. even like a tribe or a De La. I mean, they were just being free and expressive in who they were, and they weren't tied to, like, mean mugging. Like, that's just dumb. I'm happy black Elliot from Arizona. Like, I need to be that. And I think New York, the challenge with New York is New York began to become a part of me right. because it was cold outside, because money was tight. Um, people would be like, how you doing? I'd be like, yo, same shit, different day, B. Like, I'm literally like, I'm like, I sound like the people that are around me, and that's not even me. You know, and so I had to realize, like, no, I got to get my, I got to get back to my joy. I got to get back to my happiness, and I got to get back to creation, because slowly over time, even if you are a happy person, you'll allow the pessimism that is around you to consume you, and you'll become like the people around you rather than being, you'll become uh, reactionary instead of intentional. Like, imagine removing yourself, imagine eating, uh, eating better, exercising, and removing toxic people out of your life. Basically removing toxic stuff from your food, toxic stuff from your diet, toxic people from around you, and then I'm actually a different person. That's not who I was at all. That's what I was like around these people. That was my reaction to being around these folks. So I think it's just important to like, like old boy was saying earlier, like 
just realizing how you feel when you're around certain people, certain environments. We have this idea that women are emotional and men aren't. It's not true. We're all emotional. We have this idea that women are sensitive, men aren't. Um, men can be sensitive about their cars. Men can be sensitive about their shoes. Men can be sensitive about their hairlines. Like, let's just be real. You know what I'm saying? Like, men aren't sensitive. Like, men are sensitive too. They're not aware of their sensitivities. Mm -hmm. And that can be a big problem. Right. We're gonna act like men are not emotional and men are not sensitive, and yet these are the same people that their ego gets bruised and they're ready to go to war? Mm -hmm. Or they're out here killing somebody over, the, over an ex-girlfriend? They're not emotional or sensitive, really? Like, so we need to like really dispel that myth first and foremost, like, you know, men are emotional about different things and in different ways, and maybe they're not in tune with their emotions, and that becomes the issue. Like, how's that working out for you? Like, being, being like this, being this masculine box and not sharing your emotions, how's that working out for you? It's going good, it's going great, or could it be better? Great question. And I think as you, if you keep this idea in your mind, of like, how could it be better? How could it be different? How could I be freer? How could I be more me? If you keep those ideas in your head, then it makes you more open to looking into other things that could help you be, live a more happy, awesome life. Like that's, that's it, you know, just trying to be the, the best version of yourself that you possibly could be.